What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Jay Rich here. To talk some MLB prompt plays over on Prize Pick for Saturday, May the sixth. Another full slate, another great day to make some money. Let's get into the picks right after the intro. He's got it. What a catch by Mookie! A lot of names that if you're not a Pirates fan, you right off the bat, let's start with Bryce Harper. Uh, love Bryce Harper today up against Kluber. Kluber's been Good and bad. Shaky at times. I think that Philly could get it done. You know, he's obviously played a couple of games here, averaging right around eight. So it's not inconceivable. He goes over. But the interesting thing for me is his hits, runs, RBIs today are two and a half, which I haven't seen for any player. His is randomly at two and a half. Now, obviously, it is juiced to the under, but there's obviously a lot of confidence in that line to put it all the way at two and a half or people should just, should just be hammering the under because basically no player gets a line like that. So there's obviously a lot of confidence to think that he could go over and set the line there. And one and a half simply was not enough. Now, again, hitting in the middle of that lineup for Philly, great spot for hits, for runs and for RBIs. So I completely understand, but to have a line of only seven and a half, when we know on the high end of some of these lines, we see eight and a half, we see nine at times. Like I mentioned, Kluber has been kind of fine. He's been up and down, but I think today could be a rough start for him and could be the first time or in front of at least the home fans that Harper finally has a massive game. Now, Christian Walker up against Mackenzie Gore really like this number six and a half. Very, very good number um, for any hitter, and especially a guy who's been as hot as Christian Walker's been. 17.8 over the last seven, 14 over the last 14. So he's just been on fire and up against Gore, who is a lefty, and he hits, I believe his batting average is 50 points higher against lefties. His OPS is over a thousand versus lefties. So again, a guy who absolutely crushes lefties, love to take Christian Walker here. Hasn't faced Gore before, and Gore can be nasty, but I don't think he's gonna be able to get ahead of Christian Walker. He's just hits lefties far too well. Another player who, while he's been struggling hits lefty as well also is Pete Alonso. Pete Alonso has Austin Gomber today. You see the the matchup here is really good whether it's the fastball or the slider. Pete has been crushing both and against a lefty same thing with Pete. Pete has a much higher average against lefties. He has an OPS over 1050 against lefties. So even though he's been in a bit of a slump as you can see here he started off really hot then he kind of cooled down a bit and still he's trying to find his groove again. I think he can get it done against Gomber because he's just not a very good pitcher. And like I mentioned, the matchup against the lefty definitely favors Pete here. And then Jordan Alvarez against Marco Gonzalez. You know, Jordan isn't exactly a player who's known to crush le or crush lefties. But again, it's weird. He's a lefty lefty guy, but he doesn't get completely neutralized by lefties either. And Marco Gonzalez is a guy he has had a lot of success against. As you can see here, 400 average, two home runs, eight RBIs in 16 at bats. So Jordan, you know, some lefties get the best of him, but not everyone can. And Marco is not one of those players. So look for Jordan to have another big game. He had a home run yesterday. Could do it again today off the lefty Marco Gonzalez. He's just not that great. And Jordan's been very good over the past little bit. You see the fantasy score line is eight. He's been 7.8 over the last seven, 8.8 .8 over the 14 and 10.1 on the season. So the season, you know, for Jordan, well over that mark. But today, I think he can get it done against Marco Gonzalez. We'll see. Lefty lefty matchup is tough at times for some lefties, but Jordan can obviously overcome that. And the 400 average against definitely gives me more confidence to take him here as well. I would probably rank these ones in terms of order. Christian Walker, probably my number one play, then Pete, then Harper, then Jordan, probably last. I do really like Harper today, but again, and he's teetering right on the edge. Is he going to show up and play well? I think he can against Kluber. It's a big game for them. They lost yesterday. I think he can bounce back today, um, but that's kind of the order I would put them in in terms of priority. Then talking about some strikeout plays that I was looking at as well. Um, I, I know you're going to see Spencer, Spencer Strider on this list. I think I'm absolutely bad shit crazy, but the reality is, is that for whatever reason, Baltimore is not striking out right now. I, I I don't know why. It doesn't make any sense. And and yesterday, they put up nine runs. Santander hit two jacks. It was a, a really good performance from Baltimore. But eight and a half for me is just a little bit high. I would monitor this line because if there's a shot, you get it at nine. I would definitely consider taking it because at nine, I think it's just way too high. You know, I have it for an under right now and it's at eight and a half. He could obviously go over the books, thinks he can go over um, this 17% K rate over the last 14 is definitely crazy. But Spencer Strider also has a 41% K rate. So that's going to have to meet in the middle somewhere, right? Um, Baltimore is definitely going to strike out against Strider. Not going to say they're not going to do that. But um, I think this eight and a half at minus 130 is just a little bit overpriced personally. And so I'd probably look for a different number there. But the... The point is, is, I'm not necessarily looking for an under at eight and a half, but if you can get a nine and for some reason this nut line gets juiced up throughout the day, 
Uh, I would definitely take the under at nine. Absolutely would take the under at nine. Uh, Brady Falter on uh, is a uh, pitcher for Philly up against Boston. We talked about it with Wheeler yesterday. Uh, his K rate's awful, 16%. The, the Red Sox are only K at 18%. And it's barely juiced to the under. I think he goes way under that. He'd be lucky if he got three strikeouts. Uh, he, could, he could, but again, it's just... What we're seeing from the Red Sox, what we're seeing from Falter, he's just not going to get this done. There's almost no way. Four and a half is just way too high, and minus 125 is actually a pretty good price for a guy who's only averaging 3.7 Ks on the year. And then Reed Detmers, you know, he is getting some strikeouts here and there, but again, 6.2, line of six and a half, um, up against the Texas Rangers today, a team that only strikes out 24% of the time. He does have a 27% K rate, which is solid. But I don't think he's going to go over this one. And the books tend to agree. So my data kind of falls in line with an under. The books agree there. And then same with Falter. You know, the data and the line is pushing towards an under. And my data has an under here. It's really just the strider play. It's a little off the beaten path. I just think it's a little bit high. Uh, He can definitely do it. And so I'm not trying to say he's not going to do it. But um, I don't know if he has a massive K game against Baltimore the way they've been swinging lately. But he definitely could for sure. So Detmers, Falter, and Strider all for unders. And I would probably rank them Falter ahead of Detmers. Strider obviously last. And look to see if you get a nine on price. Because I think that's where the value really is. And once again, recapping the hitters. Bryce Harper, Christian Walker, Pete Alonso, and Jordan Alvarez. All for hitters fantasy score overs. Um, If I was to rank the priority once again, Christian Walker, Pete Alonso. Bryce Harper and then Jordan would be last and then I'd probably say I like the top two strikeout pitchers as well up there with Christian Walker in terms of ranking these guys all together as one um but yeah I, I think it's just you know the Bryce play would be third Jordan would be last and like I mentioned Strider is more of a if you can get him at nine that's where I would take him but thank you guys so much for watching I will see you guys in the next video make sure to drop us a like and subscribe for all future content and if you tailgate prospects hell and if we fail do not bail I know you're thinking I'm crazy after the strider pick but I think it's a pretty good one I think the data is there I think Baltimore has been good enough to get it done but until next time I'll see you guys and good luck today peace He's got That if you're not a Pirates fan, you probably don't He's know. He's the closest thing we've seen to Mike Trout. Yeah, the best team in the American League. The Yankees have the most intimidating lineup in baseball.